ble- I'm going to have you bleep out all the cuss words possible. <laughs> oh, this is going to be exciting then. Well, cool. Well, everyone, uh, yeah, thanks. So welcome to um, the Gun Explained channel. This is a special episode, our G-Watch episode um, with uh, some of our supporters here and actually our longtime mod, the original mod, uh, Ian. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. This will be good to talk seed because I know you're a seed fan. And so a lot of times the seed intersection talk doesn't happen too often, but it will here. And especially the other seed fan around here, Ashley, our social media uh, administrator, professional. How, how's it going? Oh, doing good. Good. Yeah. Again, another seed fan and even a big Atherin fan. That's what I've learned about you. And in this movie, he is quite the badass, but we'll get to that. When it- <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So to start, I, I wanted to quickly talk about what, what I thought, and then I will let you go, Ian, and then Ashley. I'm just kind of going clockwise here. Um, so, um, one, it was awesome to see it in the theater. Just because seeing a movie in a theater has more of an impact, especially like if you feel like you're really there to focus and pay attention. Mm-hmm. That was the one main thing I noticed. Um, so, and, and again, I'm going to be kind of brief with this. I thought the pacing was great because it was so fast. That's kind of what I want out of this. Just fast pacing, labeling. It's like every scene was like a new uh, like little subtitle saying, okay, we're here now. We're here now. But I didn't <laughs> mind that because it was really informing me. It was fast paced. So the story that is the the main conflict, the war story, to me, that wasn't too interesting. In fact, it seemed kind of typical stuff. But within that, what I think was the true story was actually the love story with, with Kira and Lacus. Like just seeing how the 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 decisions they were making based on their the love for each other or how other people would want to project their love onto Kira Lackis in what Kira and Lackis was wanting to do in return was about the love of each other, which affected the story the whole way. And to be honest, I thought that was a nice, that, that kind of makes it where at the end it's, it, it works out to where it's kind of a positive in a way. And I feel like that's good to get every once in a while, because even with all the death and destruction in this, and it has a lot, there's a lot of positive stuff, a lot of like happy ending stuff. Um, and and then finally, I will say that, um, and I, of course, we're going to get deeper into all these elements, but the other thing I liked about it a whole lot was the, the what I wanted it for mainly was to see what 2024 anime mech combat can look like. And I think this movie delivered on that in terms of even if it's just looking like mechs are fighting each other or making them look like they're martial artists which is kind of what Seed is known for doing the more exaggerated animations. And this really went in on that to look excellent. So that was me, Ian, your thoughts. So I think that this uh, movie did a pretty good job of continuing where destiny kind of left off um, Mm -hmm. in terms of, you just kind of see a little bit of the, like the repercussions of the destiny plan and all of that. Um, I should say I saw the movie in Japanese. Um, oh, so, good point. Uh, so I was reading subtitles. I feel like in some ways when you're in a theater and you're having to read subtitles, I can kind of take away from the movie. Um, and that fast pacedness, I think kind of hinders your, it while I like the fast pace, cause you're getting from point A to point B really quickly. And you're kind of just, yeah, they, they have, a, they have two hours to tell a story, right? Like not, it's not a 50 episode anime where they have to, where they can expound upon like all of these different plot lines that are happening in that, in that movie. So um, I feel like watching it in the theater in Japanese with the subtitles and then just the fast paceness kind of detracts just a little bit from it. Mm-hmm. But at the same sense. time, like, I had a great time with it. I felt like there was a lot of uh, cool callbacks to things. They did a lot of flashbacks. So in a way it kind of like, they're kind of like making it so that way it's easier to get in to the movie rather than you're sitting there and wondering what's the destiny plan. What's the, what's the, this, what's the, that, you know? So I think they did a great job kind of like reminding you of what the destiny plan was supposed to be. What, these characters have been up to for the last two years. Cause I believe it's a two year time skip um, after the end of destiny. Um, and then the, as far as the, the love story aspect goes, I think that is definitely was definitely, you know, very 
it was very much in your face. You knew exactly that that's what it was about. I, and I feel like the trailers kind of like did enough misleading where it kind of, you don't know how it's going to happen. And then it just kind of happens. You're like, Oh, okay. We're getting into that already. Okay. Got you. Uh, the combat was fantastic. I love the animation. The animation was, was great, especially in the mobile suits, the, Characters' lips. I know Adams a th- has the thing with the noses. I guess the lips oh. were like really standing out to me quite a bit in the movie. It was a little <laughs> jarring at first to see that kind of looked like they got Botox and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was a little bit weird to get used to at first. But other than that, as far as the combat goes, as far as the animation, like it was fantastic. I thought there was a lot of cool um, moments in that movie. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh yeah, I agree with a lot of that. Yeah, Ashley, let's see your take. So I actually went to both viewings: the sub on the seventh and the dub on the eighth, um, just because. <laughs> <laughs> just because, like, I just wanted to. Because when I watched it at first, I enjoyed it that much. I'm like, well, I want to go again just for the last two raw because we only only got two showings. Yeah. Um, and it, I want to say, like, crowd wise. On the first day I went, you know, because I'm from a smaller uh, state and a smaller area, I didn't think anybody was coming. But, like, on day one, there was about, like, maybe six or seven people that showed up, which was quite impressive. I was like, oh, wow, (laughs) there's actual people. And I would say, like, when watching the sub, it was a lot more quiet (laughs) a little bit because, you know, again, you know, since this is in Japanese language and it's subtitles, you know, I feel like people were more paying attention to the words and some, you know, and it really just depends, right? But then on the second day, the dub, it was a lot more people. We had up to 15 people in the theater. Or even more than that, I think it was 17. And that's the most I've ever seen because, you know, again, like when you come from a smaller area, you just never know. And it was all, you could tell, I could tell that the crowd for this one was a lot more like into it. Um, Mm. A lot of people laughed at certain moments. Um, There seemed to be cheering and stuff, especially for the Afrin moments. And um, some of the action moments as well and the little funny moments as well. And I really, it made me really enjoy it the second viewing. Not really because of the dub, but just more like people were really into it. Yeah, I think the crowd is what really made me enjoy it even more. that's cool. And even after the film, you know, I got to talk. um, It was like a a good chunk of us were just huddling together and we were just talking about the film and a lot of us is like okay when is Gundam Seed Justice coming out like because <laughs> oh, we want because wow. we want more of a Afrin citric oh okay film. yeah but sense. a lot of people were very um very happy with you know certain aspects like and and everything so it was like, very engaging and it was really cool to meet different Gundam fans local to me so that okay. was really cool but as for the film itself, like, you know, just, I get, I think you guys hit it nail on the head. The movie is about love. It's about not only, like, okay, you have, you know, Kira and Lacus and, you know, their power dynamics and the struggle. But then there's also the, the topic of, okay, what happens if there's an interference that splits these two up? You know, like as we talk deeper about it we'll we'll touch that yeah. part but you can just definitely see that the theme is not only about love but it's like what if someone interferes and then they try to force you know their beliefs on you hence the destiny plan yeah and just kind of throwing people all over the place causing more conflict causing more harm than good so i i what i really love about it was that the film really hit on those points a little bit too while still giving us some really amazing cgi for the yeah. battle moments and the music was oh yeah phenomenal and i love that um there was callbacks from the original seed um soundtrack both seed and seed destiny yes along with integrating it into um the newer stuff too and just bringing about bringing back a lot of like the older artists like team revolution um seesaw which disbanded years ago came back together just to perform and write the song for the closing of the film and 
of course, Nami Tamaki doing like a an inserted song um, because she loved. It seems like everybody loves Gundam so much, so it was like a, def, a definite yes for them to hop back on. So it was just really cool. The you see a corporation of old callbacks with some new. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Especially the music. You're right. Like I'm not crazy about like singing songs. Uh, yeah, either. I don't know what I'm trying to get at. But it was done, but like at the beginning, the opening badass, I would have rather it played traditional seed music instead, but I'm not going to complain right. because as it went, and even one of my favorite tracks is from Destiny, like when they're first rolling out, especially like when Shin's first rolling out, it has like that yeah. really operatic, like, and mm -hmm. they played that at one point where they were all rolling out in space. And I was like, oh, I'm like in because <laughs> the background again, I did not care for seed at all. But when right. I watched Destiny, I was really surprised how much it was hitting things I like about things. It was exactly. like new. And so I think overall this movie doubled or doubled down on that. It really yep. made it. And, and so that's another good point I want to bring up real quick because I want to give everyone a chance to talk. I know I'm going to blab. But the one main thing about I liked Destiny a lot, even its story. And this movie did a good job of playing off what destiny was trying to say as its message and almost saying how like, yeah, he tried to do that or, and they tried, but in the, at the end of the day, is this just what the humans always going to go through? Even if we think we know what we can do. And then for that to then mean that really the story is about love makes sense because it's not ever going to be about solving the world's problems. You know, it, it comes down to wanting to find out what happens to those individuals in that world and, you know, this, I think this movie pulled it off. Um, and real quick, I want to add, as for theater um, attendance, and I want to hear what you have to say about this, Ian. I, I was surprised how many people were in the theater, um, oh. even when we planned to get some snacks when we got in, but the lines were too big, and we were like, oh. we're just going to go to the theater. So that doesn't normally happen on the weekdays. Um, and it was at the theater that not only was this theater a theater I went to the first time it opened, mm -hmm. but I also worked there in high school, so... Oh wow! There's a personal connection to full theater. circle. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, Ian, uh, was the theater packed where you were? I mean, and you're in uh, near LA, so mm -hmm. I would assume yeah. a lot of people would be there. Um, I had let's see here. I took two other people with me, and then I would say there was maybe about fifteen oh, cool. people in the theater in total. Oh, okay. Like, but I think uh, similar to what Ashley was saying about like the the vibe of the theater when you're watching it, especially because you're watching it in Japanese. I think everybody is watch, you know, trying to read the subtitles. So they're more right. oh. invested in that right. rather than, uh, you know, reacting to the, to the action itself. Um, although I would find myself going like, Ooh, okay. Now I know where they're going with this. All right. Yeah. That makes, you know, I would kind of like say things to myself. Right. Like, mm -hmm. right. But I, I didn't hear anybody else going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um but i i think i'm probably have had i probably gone to the dub uh version of it it probably would have been a little bit of a different vibe i i am sure yeah, yeah probably yeah because and, and yeah speaking of dub and it's actually cool actually that you got to see both because i think like ian was alluding to it's probably different experiences so something i've learned through getting into gundam and watching more anime is that sometimes yeah. things are pronounced differently I, yes. but I was really surprised how in this they went pronouncing main things, people's names differently. And yeah. luckily, I think, and maybe because I don't have that investment in the original seed, it didn't really bother me too much, even though it's kind of like, come on. But the acting was good. So, like, that's the maybe they pronounced something wrong, but I think the acting was good enough to where, yeah, as you're watching it, it kind of helps you quickly establish what a character's going through. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I and, and so and so Ian, I'm kind of with you because you even voiced a concern about the mispronunciation. Yeah, and you're a. I mean, Seed would probably be your favorite uh, Gundam, would you say? I mean, I have two? a few. I I would say it's definitely like the one that I'm a little bit more. Well, I'd Close. say you see, I'm getting more invested right. in yeah. just because of you know hanging out with you guys and being oh, surrounded sure. by so many more UC people yeah. these days than I than I was. Like I used to just watch the AUs mostly because that's what yeah. I knew, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Definitely an easy 
a barrier, less of a barrier to entry when you're watching an AU versus like trying to figure out where to start with UC and all of that. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug, go check out Adam's channel if you want to know where to start with UC. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that being said, like I would say, seed is definitely like the one that I got more invested in, just because of the fact that like that was kind of the start of a new timeline, like a new new timeline, right? Like right. even though it's a reflection of UC and there's a lot of elements from UC in it, it was the one that I was able to kind of say, okay, I'm old enough now, I can invest more brain power into this, try to dissect things a little bit more. Yeah. And, and really kind of just, uh, immer you know, get immersed with this. And it helps that the suits are flashy and angular and, you know, yeah. the combat's fun and, and all of that stuff. So um, Seed's definitely up there for me. Um, and I think just overall the, um, the way that the – with the dub in particular, because I grew up with the original dub. I'm going to say it like that because, yeah. you know. Most, um, yeah, that's how most experienced it. So, you know, having those actors not be there for that movie um, mm -hmm. kind of was disappointing to me. And I think normally I don't get so passionate. I'm going to call it passion in this yeah. case yeah. about like Absolutely. the dubs. I'm usually kind of like the person who can say, you know what? I don't really care if it's subbed or dubbed as long as it sounds good. Yeah, like I, I'm not one who's usually particular about subs or dubs. I think that... Uh, in this case, for some reason, it just kind of resonated with me more that they're like Kira Yamato, for example, that's a really easy name to say, you know, yeah. I've seen Naruto, there's a character named Yamato, and they call him Yamato, they don't call him Yamato, you know, yeah. they, they, there's plenty of other examples of anime, where they, they are able to pronounce the characters names correctly. And I feel like that's a step, even though the acting probably was fantastic. And I was telling Ashley right after watching the movie, like in, uh, in the discord that I'll, when it comes out on for re home release and all of that, I'll yeah. probably watch it dubbed and then I'll have right. like a different take on it. Yeah. Um, but that kind of was like my reasoning for going to see the sub over, and, over. And the I dub. think that is completely valid. I know when 100%. I'm into a property a whole lot, you know, especially the storytelling, the acting is part of it. When they have to change voice actor, you know, there's that thing where it's like, ah, that's not what I want. But it's like, and then you have to learn to accept it. And sometimes you can do that quickly. Sometimes, you know, it takes a while. Like even for me with Cuckoo's Doan's Island, because it wasn't the same actors, I get why. But like, I was just more about like, you know what? I'm, I guess we got this. I'm happy. Whatever, okay. you know. Um, sure. So, um, okay, let's. I want to get more. Or did you have something to say, Ashley? Oh yeah, I just wanted to kind of add um, add into this topic too, because you know, just like just like Ian, I grew up watching the Ocean Group that did the dub. And, yeah. You know, I'm so familiar with that. Like, you know, yeah, it gets um, ingrained in you. Matt Hill, like Matt Hill as Hira, Sam Vincent as um, Afrin, um, Brad Swaley. Shout out to him. Oh yeah, um, who was Dielka? I mean. That, that was the cast, you know, we grew up with. And recently, the more I've, you know, learned more about the voice acting industry as a whole um, and then interacting with voice actors, I start to learn certain things about just how unfair this industry can be sometimes and yeah. how you have corporate versus, you know, the, the agency. Art. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's then, right. There's agencies, the corporations, and the art yeah. of it in the first place. And it all kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Hold and up. just when there's just like a clash there and then you decide to switch everything up and you bring something new into it, it's going to be very jarring. Yeah. And I think that's the whole sentiment that everyone has expressed their frustration about. You know, it's nothing against the new actors. It, you know, they're not at fault for this. It's right. just more of the decision that was made and how it's just so sad. I mean, this movie, we waited 20 years for this. And you could have at least brought the original cast back. Like I know it is it's hard, it, disheartening. And then if you think about it, like the only like OG member that actually got their role reprised was the original voice actor from Mula Flaga, who actually um, a few years ago he moved from Canada to LA. Oh, and now it's the only way he could somehow got his. Which he's a cool yeah. character, so that's actually pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. That, that, Okay, so I'm glad both of you guys brought this up 
in terms of, of in a very similar thing. Both of you have that kind of past invested interest in seed yeah. and and that whole thing that happens when you change some things up. And yeah, that's yeah. yeah hopefully they think of that more in the future when it comes. Oh, to yeah, stuff. absolutely. And, uh, you know, to your point, though, Adam, I think what they're trying to do at this point is because they did those HD remasters a couple years ago yes. and all of that. That's mm -hmm. they were trying to reintroduce the the cat or the audience to seed and see destiny. So by changing oh. up the voice cast, they're trying to induct a new generation into Gundam. You know, that's that, very understandable. Yeah, that makes that. sense. I've always learned that, too. Yeah. After time passes, they got to kind of keep in account newer fans. I, I mean, yeah, look at, like, ha can you imagine anybody else playing Wolverine? Like Hugh Jackman. I know he's about to reprise his role as Wolverine in Deadpool 3, right? Like, but, this, right. That's a bad example because, to be honest, I love Hugh Jackman, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I would be more into that, like, smaller, bulkier Wolverine. Okay. Like, hey, yeah. bub, you know? Okay, then how about Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man? Well, that's a good point because that's how I associate him. Yeah. Because yeah, I never really yeah. knew of him before. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I would so, even say Captain America too. Yeah, Chris, Chris Evans. Evans. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think that they're just trying to introduce it to a new audience to bring more people yeah. into the to the franchise. So while I I understand it from that perspective, it it does kind of for us fans who have been around and obviously you know the companies are not going to cater to yeah. to us that for casting so purposes. Such a specific thing, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm you know I'll get over it. It's it's something that you kind of. Learn to, I could use another dub as an example, you know, if we revisit this in a different way, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you those should. are good. Which, well, I want to dive more into like what happens in this movie because, um, it, it not necessarily like play by play of like the, some of the plot, cause it's not that big of a deal really. And you guys correct right. me as we go. What happens is they are, are trying, it's like the groups are trying, the groups of the world and the Earth sphere are really just trying to find a way to like sign into all being in the same team. And while conflict happens, Compass will just go down and tell those sides, hey, stop, yeah. you know. And as they're figuring things out, I guess this group had a plan, even though it wasn't based off of territories wanting control, it was more of the advanced or this new, the new coordinators, and I forgot they had like a name for them, just wanting the courts, the, the courts, yeah, just wanting yeah. to kind of take over. And apparently, Kira was a failed one. Lacus was is really one. So yeah, yeah so <laughs> like. It, it, what's interesting is then it's not like this story is then really about the military industrial complex, right. which is again, the thing I appreciate they were able to move on from that, even though that element was still used for, you know, these people that, you know, had a bad plan in mind. And, um, but, but because Kira and Lacus are part of the coordinators, the core destiny plan, and part of Compass, that's when then their love it becomes the central conflict. So, because I will say when you have that scene where these new bad guys, the Black Knight team, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. mind controls Kira, I felt that was a little of a easy way to make a conflict happen. And while at first I was like, eh, I was like, well, you know what? That's not really what this movie is supposed to be about anyway. So that's just a quicker way to get to... Mm -hmm. the main part of the conflict being based on, yeah, maybe coordinators, humans, but really the love people have for each other. So I was able to look past that, but right. how did you guys feel about that idea where there's these new people with superpowers that were able to mind control Kira? Um, so what I would say is yeah. um, being more, not too long ago before the film, I actually read some of the short stories that were given to the Japanese fans mm -hmm. um, as um, like a thank you for coming to the film sort of thing. I learned a couple of elements that wasn't fully incorporated into the film, but I'll touch on a little bit oh, later. Wow. Okay. But the the first thing about the group foundation, if you think about their name, foundation really, it's literally some sort of like kingdom that is near Eurasia and you have this queen aura. And when I think of the name foundation, it's like, okay, they're trying to set some, they're trying to yeah. build something upon it. They're yeah. like, hey, you know, if we can, you know, rope in compass and, you know, work together with them as a way for us to get on the Eurasia side of things and, you know, kind of 
work as an alliance, right? Mm -hmm. um, that sort of happens. And then, of course, you know, you have Orb, you know, being a part of it as they're kind of like, um, I like to call them the moderators of the whole thing because you have Terminal. Oh, and Terminal, yeah. the group that is, consists of just, you know, Afrin and Mayrin. Mayrin is, oh my gosh, just her character. I love her character. Um, she's very intelligent, you know, because she's able to hack into, you know, the operating system and get some sort of intel while Afrin is kind of like on foot trying to get, you know, information from people on the ground. Oh, yeah. So it seems to me the way each of the factions are set up and then you have kind of like Compass, which is Zaf, kind of teaming up with um, Terminal, which is Orb, to kind of work together to exchange the information. And then with these new guys coming into the picture, it's like you don't really know too much about them. You just think, OK, oh, there seem to be like this, you know, newer um, entity that's being introduced and they need some assistance so of course they're like oh you know we can work something out and whatever but then when you start to see the brainwashing element of it because these are um more of a superior they're supposed to be a superior being of coordinators because of how they are genetically created mm. um they have this you know ability to be able to mind control people depending on how like how strong their mentality is so one example is kira unfortunately he was a little bit more easier to manipulate because he had more of a vulnerable state and his mentality was very shaken almost well, like he knew yeah. he could just get through with everything like it's not like he had right. to be on high alert exactly yeah. and i don't know if you noticed shin then I would say I had the strongest mentality because in a joking way, he wasn't really thinking of anything, honestly. So they weren't really able That's to true. like he was fully. kind of one track to like, how can I support Kira or be like right on the battlefield with him? Exactly. Which, and I don't know if you're getting to this, which, you know, on the other end, whenever it yeah. came to an issue of Lacus or Kira being in like immense danger, they were able to link up with each other or connect with each other. Yeah. They were so strongly Usually. connected in that moment. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Yeah, um, which I think are cool little elements where, yeah, it brings the new type stuff in, and I think they do it well in this. Um, right. And, um, uh, yeah, Ian, any thoughts on any of that, or do you have another uh, thought? No, I, 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 I'm I, right there with Ashley. Like, that all kind of makes sense. And um, I, I think Shin's one-track mind, for example, like, it, it's very uh, visible in this movie. Yeah. I feel like in a way that it... It was kind of there in Destiny, if you if you really like think, reflect on that, and then yeah. kind of like into this movie, his one track mind though has shifted to Kira, 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 support, support, support. Be be right there next to him. Show him that I am a valuable member of Compass. And right? even he right. got the justice, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes. So like his suit is justice, almost like that's now where his mind is. Which I want to say, someone brought that up maybe in the Discord or somewhere like the names of the suits have to deal with like the mindsets of the individuals. Yes. I would agree with that. 100%. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. So I, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I thought while Shin didn't have all the badass moments he's known for, I like what they did with his character. And it's interesting like, that, Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Please. No, please. Please. I was going to say a little, little bit about the coordination. I mean, the elements of the suits reflecting on each of the characters. If you really think about it, one of the hugest things that a lot of the fans I met said said this was a Shin redemption moment for him because if you think about it, the reason why he got justice is because he actually got justice in the film. If you yeah. think about it, no, I really think they they showed him where yeah his one track mind he had in that first one about being the best you ch changed into that more of being the best he can for Kira being that he is doling out justice and so <laughs> then that made little things happen where then his uh girlfriend um Luna Maria, Luna Maria. She, she was even being questioned about his mentality where it's almost like explaining to the audience where Shin is at now and I like that cuz then it made yeah. Shin more of a not that he wasn't lovable in, in Destiny, but in this, it, you're seeing that well, vulnerable side of him that it's almost like he wouldn't show. 
Right. And even the girls are pointing that out, making it, well, see how dumb he is? But it's like, no, he's like totally invested in this new phase. Yeah, almost like the redemption from, and I loved how people would call him, what, the freedom killer? What was, mm-hmm. was that? Yeah, the freedom yeah. killer. I, yeah. I liked how that was like a known thing for him. And I like that he also didn't seem to have a big head about it. Yeah. I, I liked that too. I, I tell you, they really did a good job with his character. Yeah. Least. Usually. Yeah. Um, and then another cool character, Atherin, which, again, Destiny is a good example of, like, they did great with Atherin in that one, where it's mm-hmm. almost like his kind of new life in Destiny, and so you never know, and I kind of like how it's almost the same thing in this, right. where he's like him and um, Golly, you know, are kind of, you Kigali, know, yeah. doing the thing, but, and, and I think I got this right, so he, he has this, like, special Zagok, which yes. I think looks amazing because it has all the stuff, but also during the battle, he, he was able to like shed its armor. And then it was the new justice yeah. underneath, mm-hmm. which yep. I was never expecting anything like that. And when it happened, I was like, that is such a great idea. <laughs> right. Cause that's yeah. just him and his, like what he's known for, you know, right. um, yeah. That that was really cool, and if you look at the new Gumpla they just announced, yes, we're getting you'll it. You'll see something very Easter eggy uh, that they did very purposefully. They they did something very purposefully with the new Zagok. The mm-hmm. um, Gumpla. Why does it look like it's made to come apart and have a justice? I'll I'll tease you with this, Adam, because I, okay. I I want you to see this like for yourself and kind of like mm-hmm. then it'll just make it'll just click for you. But there's yeah. a mirror underneath like they did like on the stand for the the new prototype there's a mirror underneath and you'll see something right underneath the zagok's feet and that will tell you everything that you oh, need to know yeah. right there okay i'm gonna have to check that out after this <laughs> yes we look, we look forward to your reaction too <laughs> okay yes i want to see that reaction or hear about it um yeah <laughs> i, I, I th- think to- yeah oh go ahead i'm sorry, sorry. I just wanted to say, like, I think they did a really good job with Atherin. They kind of flipped him a little bit in this, uh, I, I think, his character a little bit, because it was a lot of woe is me's for Atherin for a while, like, in the, at least in, in the first half. Yeah, and then yeah. he, you know, Kira was kind of the one who br- brought him back to, you know, baseline and was like, this oh. is what you're fighting for. And this movie kind of does saying. the role reversal, where now it's Atherin's turn to do the same thing for Kira. You are, you know... How do you know that Lacus doesn't love you? Yeah. Because that was his big thing. How do you know that you have to take on the world by yourself or the universe by yourself? How do you know that all of this is on your shoulders and your shoulders alone? Well, you guys suck. That was like basically what Kira <laughs> said in the movie, you know? Yeah. He's like, I'm a badass. You're not. I'm going to go take care of business. You guys sit back and, and watch, right? And then he kind of learns like, no. I can't, you can't do that by yourself. And Atherin kind of like beating the crap out of him for lack of a better term. <laughs> not, not only that, but like, it was cool how in that moment when the way Atherin says things, and then if you know, you realize, oh, wait a minute, but Atherin and Lacus, you know, had that history. So it's like from Atherin's perspective right now, he, he's making a lot of sense. And I, yeah. Yeah. because I think even the other characters like gasped, when I think Kira said something about Lacus or something, you know, um, uh, yeah, that was a good scene. And yeah, Ian, good point because I, I was even talking about with Zeta, how I love how Zeta kind of flips what you expect. And that's what this movie did with a lot of the characters from, so this movie, yeah, followed these principles. I kind of realized recently that make a a sequel good. Um, Yeah. There's even a double O moment in there thrown in, I feel like, with this new, with this Accords thing that they, that they started, mm-hmm. like this new breed, like, cause in Destiny and right. Speed, it was like super coordinator. That's what Kira was, right? Yeah. I thought it was kind of an interesting retcon. And I don't know if I mean that, uh, like, sarcastically or if I mean that, like, it's actually an interesting plot point. Like, I guess yeah. I might have to watch it another time to really kind of see but I feel like it was really shoehorned in like, Oh, Lacus was gen, you know, genetically altered from the get go. That's why she, she was made for, for this. Like she's supposed to be the, the new queen, the new generation of queen. And yep. she's all powerful, even more powerful than Kira. I mean, I don't it, know it's how I interesting about that. because I agree. Like at what, at one aspect, like, is this, yeah, just shoehorned in retcon, like this kind of, 
information. And is it like, is that, is that not a good idea or is actually that a good way to make everything actually tie together without really changing any core things? In fact, it almost backs up uh, Lacus because she was someone that was able to be a performer, a singer, get a message across lead. Like if you're going to have someone that was created to be some like super coordinator uh, mm -hmm. to an accord and that's the destiny, then that makes sense. I think. And another thing too, I think I can go ahead and bring this tidbit in here too. Yeah. But if you think about Queen Aura, I don't know if anybody noticed, you know, she, what was mentioned in the film was that when they, they did this research 19 years ago, right. Of trying to figure out like, Hey, we're going to make this next, you know, superior being called the Accords. Aura, if you saw her original form, she looked different. And then you see her now, she looks childlike. There's a reason for that. So what I learned in the novel, um, <laughs> shout out to Sydney Onyx Scans for doing the translation. Oh yeah. Um, it was actually referenced that in the Gun of Seed Freedom novels, that she did a lot of experiments on herself because back in like 19 years ago in the plants, there was a declining birth rate. And so because of the declining birth rate, she tried to pitch this idea of like, hey, what can we do to kind of keep the population, you know, going, to keep them more youthful, to keep them, you know, kind of mm. living a little longer. And so she was the one that not only created the accords, because, you know, everyone called their mom, but she oh, was yeah. also, she was able to create some sort of anti-aging. Yeah, to keep herself so, living longer. Like she was like the next yeah. step of like. Okay, that's a cool explanation because it seemed like they were alluding to something because they were talking yeah. about experiments. But I didn't know the details, so that's cool that that's in that novel then. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that either. That's pretty. That's a pretty awesome tip. Yeah. That I think then makes it where I was saying my complaint would be there's these kind of random new bad guys. Yeah. But it kind of gives them a good backstory that makes sense in line with the rest of the universe. Yeah, yeah because like the more like when I – and I actually read it right after the film, that part of it. Cause I mean, cause I remember a certain, I remember that element, but then like when you watch the film and then I had to go back and do a second take, I'm like, Oh, that made sense. They didn't want to, they probably didn't have enough time to incorporate that element to it because they were, I guess, cause like when the film came out in Japan, it's like, okay, if you guys got the novel, you could read it, but like, oh, yeah. we don't have access to it. And unless, you know, we have to get it translated. So just reading that element and you kind of see the idea and then also um aura mentioned lacus's mom which i believe is the woman with the pink hair in that photo that she took with her mm. that even though we don't know what lacus's mom looked like you know during seed we just know her as miss klein but we kind of have an idea what she looks like and so if you think about it because she did these experiments lacus became the successful prototype you know along with orphe and the other members of the Black Knights, you know, and that's why there was this huge like push or force because you can see that Orphe was very forceful. He's like, oh, you know, you're just like me. You're one and the same. We yeah. were meant to, you know, create a new world and rule together. It's the destiny. Well, yeah. yeah, the destiny. Yeah. But then in actuality, if you do see those weird little uh, moments where, you know, she decided to dance with Orphe. She's decided to eat that whole interaction in the Rose Garden or the Flower oh, Garden. Yeah. And you see Af I mean, you see Kira and you, you notice Kira is just kind of like out of it. He's like, oh, well, I, it, it seems like he, I guess the way Orphe was implying like, oh, well, you don't even meet the criteria yeah, to be with Lacus. Yeah, he's not at that level that, he is as an accord yeah. and probably reverberate some sort of brainwave to make Kira feel uh, exactly uh, like less yeah, superior. Yeah. yeah. And mentioning that too, is just like, if you really think about it, that's why Kira, that's why it was so easy for them to get into Kira's psyche and do sort of the distortion that he had. And then of course with Lacus being super vulnerable as well, because she was kind of in, you know, one in the same with Orphe. That's why he was able to kind of tap in and be like, Hey, let me 
let me kind of brainwash. Let me rewrite the events for you saying like, hey, we were destined to meet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. When in actuality, she's like, you could tell that she was able to break free and say, no, <laughs> like yeah. Kira's the one I choose, not you. And yeah, you which was, yeah, that main conflict, which is interesting. And I'll let you go in. I'm sorry, because whenever she was faced with that and would say that it would almost reflect off that character. And that would be the driving force because they're like, yeah. what? You should love me. It's like these characters didn't understand what love was and you learn yeah. what it is with Kira. Yeah. Ian. I think it, I think it's a combination of things. I definitely think the, the fact, the words that were being used Kira course over the course of like those couple years that we don't see right like the fighting with compass and all of that however long compass was ago compass was established um he was putting this weight on his shoulders that he had to impress basically impress lackis like by taking care of business when putting all of this stuff on my shoulders i'm going to make a world that lackis will like you know and I think that his uh, resiliency in that in those moments, and I think that's part going back to what Ashley was saying about the getting brainwashed a little bit more easily, like during the Eurasia oh, conflict, right? Like, yeah, um, that kind of kicked off the real plot of the movie, right? Like, um, I think that made him more susceptible susceptible in that sense. I think he was already feeling kind of like not as confident with his. Uh, his love of Lacus, even though he knows he loves Lacus, but he wasn't sure where she was standing, you know? So there was a lot of like psychological work, things at play, you know, at the, in his mind, in addition to the environmental factors that were going on during that point. Sorry, I got into therapist mode there for a no. second. No, <laughs> this is good. This is good. Yeah, so it's, good. it's, that's, and that's why I think this movie works well because it really is, looking at human interactions and how we would react, you know, uh, in, in these scenarios. And I almost feel like it's, it, it almost like helps support having just kind of a basic bad guy story. But if you're yeah incorporating these elements of how people, you know, the main characters can be vulnerable at any time and then how they're right. dealing with that. Um, again, is I think what made this a, a good story. So like in, in, you know, that makes me think like, um, I think they said this was in the making for like 15, 20 years or something like that. Um, yeah. Do you, do you guys know if there was this, there was always this intended story to be told or do you think it took them a while to come up with a story? Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the things I follow closely with is that back then the, uh, the screen, the screenwriter, who's the oh. wife of Matsuo Fukuda, who's the director. Yeah. She, you know, was in the works with this back in 2006. Mm-hmm. They announced it or like, hey, we're making this film happen. And she, but what prolonged it was that she had health issues. And so that's what put things in the back burner. Mm-hmm. And then once she, once she was back in good health, I think that's what got her to finally get the, get the rest of the story written. And then on top of that, you know, she did pass in 2016. So, and the script was finished. Um, per Fukuda, who confirmed. So because of that, I think in the background, um, I think it was always intend to be written this way. And I think with Fukuda, you know, he put a huge hand in directing it because he incorporated a lot more elements to the, the script that she already wrote, right? And so because of that, I feel like, you know, it's kind of like a mixture of the two. Like, it seemed that it was already written a certain way. But then, you know, Fukuda, um, I, I don't know if like, you remember in the theater, he did the yeah. little interview part. Yep. So you can really tell, like, like he really handled it with care. And it you seemed tell, like, it, yeah. 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 And you know what? And that's a good point because, you know, 2016 might seem like a long time ago, but even after that, like, let's say then they were starting to work on it and then COVID happened. I'm sure that delayed uh, this r- release into some degree anyway. I yeah. wonder if they were going to announce something before. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's cool that we can agree that it's a good story. I think it's a, it's a well done story and it just, it gives room. And I think it gives um, reasonable motivations for there to be conflict, you know, because yeah. The battles were cool when main hero pilots had to meet with each other. It was really cool to see. Like, 
like the, the the movie made me hate those Black Knight uh, <laughs> characters. So when they had the battle, which I was like, oh, I can't wait to see, or I can't wait when so and so meets up with so and so in battle, like how they're gonna act, like Agnes and um, Unamaria, right? Yeah. Whenever because of what was going on there, that which was mm -hmm. another subplot that was explaining the love angle too of of this. Yeah, movie. I, and also it's good that you brought up Agnes because I was gonna mention her a little bit. So a little detail about Adnes, just a little bit, TLDR, you know, Adnes, you know, joined this, you know, around the same time in the Academy as Shen and Luna Mario. You know, she was up there in ranks, right. you know, and very skilled at pilot and everything. And then she got this whole title as the Moonlight Valkyrie because, you know, she, I guess it was kind of like a Zaf sort of PR thing to promote, you know, like, oh, okay. you know, not only she's beautiful, but she has the skills. And then you kind of see that toxic trait about her where she tries to get with certain, you know, yeah, male she characters. Like she, well, yeah. she deserves it. Like she can get it with no problem. Exactly. And like that how wasn't she, happening. Yeah. Exactly. When she was trying to, you know, to make a pass at Kira and Kira's like, no, you don't understand what you're talking about. And then Luna, you know, seeing the whole thing, she's like, what are you doing? Are you now in love with him? Now what? And then of course, you know, at Atnes throwing jabs at Luna for being with Shen, she's like, what do you like about Shen? He's an idiot. But then you start to see that she's stuck by him because not only, you know, he has a lot of flaws, he accepted those flaws. And that's why she stuck by him the and, entire time. And that's, again, what I was saying earlier, like that, that those are the moments that we're describing who Shen is now compared to before. And even though they're pointing out these flaws, you're seeing this person that actually cares really much yeah. about the people around him and what he is doing and doing the right thing, even mm -hmm. if that means he's a little fumbly or whatever. And I think that, um, yeah, again, excellent way they weaved all that together. Yeah. I was going to also, a little last thing to bring up too, is another dynamic you see with Atnes, you know, because she wasn't getting her way. She wasn't getting what she wanted. She's like, well, I'm going to start with the Black Knights because you, oh, yeah. you see that she, um, Shira was the one that he, he could, you could tell that Shira was able to kind of get into her mind easy and be like, oh, you're this type of person. Let me say like, oh, the stronger is the beautiful or something, which really got oh. to her. And you could tell, like, like, you know, throughout the film, she rushes over to him and she starts fighting on that side. And it's crazy how that. <laughs> yeah, happens. no, I, yeah, that was done well. Ian, anything to add? Agnes, uh, kind of, it, you know, kind of like what you were saying earlier, it made it easy to hate the Black Knights. Agnes made it easy to really kind of like hate her. And <laughs> yeah, her, it, it's like a Rekua thing out of uh, uh, Zeta. A Rekua, a. Um, Quests, uh, you know, yeah. you, you, Flay you Alistair, it. Oh, oh, yeah, from and the Flay especially, yeah. um, you know. And I was watching something the other day, and somebody made a point to bring up like Flay was the way that she was because of how she was raised, you know, and that's why she was so she never knew anything outside of being a rich girl, right? Like, she right. that's how she was uh, raised. So then she's thrown into this conflict. And so she's doing, she's in survival mode, right? Like when you look at it in that aspect, she's not as, as hateable, right? Like, but then Agnes is doing things on purpose. She was purposely going between Shin. And if she wasn't after Shin, she was after Kira. Yeah. And if she wasn't after Kira, she was after Shin. And then Luna got in the way and was like, back off. Mine. <laughs> I called <laughs> this, you know? And, I liked at the end of the movie, like how even though Agnes might have been the superior pilot in the academy, that Luna like stepped up her experience in the last war. I mean, granted, we don't know what Agnes's experience was like in the last war, like during the Destiny plan and all of that, but that direct exposure just makes her a better pilot. It also mm -hmm. like gave her that emotional maturity and all of that. Yeah. And I think that that made Luna's like character arc just so, in this movie, like so much more likable. And then Agnes yeah. in return was just two timing for two timing sake. I feel like, you know? Yeah. They did a good job. Yeah. Shin and Luna Mario have kind of given them more to their characters. Um, you know, Power some, couple. It, and you know, something else I think is funny that I 
think, you know, was in Seed or Destiny, you know, where they have these shots, you know, where it's an anime girl and they have to, you know, do the funny shots. <laughs> and, and so I went and I saw this movie with my wife and my son, and I was curious what they would do in this one. And while it wasn't overblown or crazy, there were some scenes. I thought one that was kind of scary was when yeah. Lacus was getting forced. And there, I was surprised how much they kind of, went with the animation or what they drew, but it wasn't too, it wasn't too far, but it was enough to, right. it was enough to be like, yeah, this guy's a bad guy. Like it was really showing you that he's a bad guy. And then the other part was when, um, Lacus got her new suit and it seemed like she was like bouncing around everywhere, <laughs> but it, so it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah. you know, it wasn't crazy, but I thought it was a cool, like almost like it's a call out to the, you know, to that type of thing that mm -hmm. seed has done. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool to me because it's like near the end, Lacus, yeah, gets this badass spacesuit and then has that thing to connect, you know, with the freedom. I thought that was a really cool way to make it where these are the main characters. They're kind of combining forces and they have all their new gear to like settle the score at the end. And yeah. I was also going to say too, what one of the things that you mentioned, one of the things I um, caught the overall message is more like an indu window in, in a sense that like it really shows like a full several fact that after everything that lack of Sincura went through throughout the whole entire film the struggles and everything it showed that like once it, you know the strike became the mighty strike oh. and that backpack connected in it really shows that their their whole dynamic like oh we're coming together you know, yeah. we we are powerful together. We were meant to be in this position. And it, it was just such a beautiful moment. And I love that a lot. It actually, it actually made me tear up a lot. And, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, way, the way they hit, yeah, those emotional moments in this were amazing. Um, yeah. So we're getting to near the end, but I want to ask you each something. Um, uh, Ian, I'll start with you. And so the question is, one, favorite mobile suit from this. And then two, maybe favorite moment. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to say the Mighty Strike Freedom. I mean, as much as I love, the Zagok was amazing. I, I think yeah. that's my, yeah. like, <laughs> just, I think that the Zagok is probably my runner-up, but the Mighty Strike Freedom is my, is probably just the way that they, that ending coming together, Ashley just kind of, tied it into a nice little neat bow for me in that, in that yeah. regard, how she explained yeah. that. So I think that's enough said on that one. And then favorite moment from the movie, I would say just the, the way that Shin like got uh, his like redemption, his redemption. Like he was, you know, he got into the destiny. They got all that, the mirage stuff, like, uh, you know, his his uh, new type moment, uh, kind of like Camille with four and all of that, except oh, with yeah. Stella. Like, I thought that was that was amazing. <laughs> um, you know, there's just there's a couple of things like I'm like, OK, this th it was just a good movie. I mean, I enjoyed it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Ashley, favorite mobile suit, favorite part. Oh, man, it's so hard because they're all amazing in the film. Surprisingly, I, you know. As you guys know, I love the Justice, right? And I love Shin's yeah. Justice, and I love um, the original OG one. But the suit that actually became my favorite, oh, I'm going to have to say the two of them because I love the design. It's the guy, the Gan. Oh, yeah. That was piloted by us, by not only uh, Agnes Agnes and um, Hilde, because Hilde had her own version. But oh. I also like the um, Gelgu Menace the um mm. Luna Mario custom because for some reason that was a callback. I believe those suits were introduced in like the first um 0079 series. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I was really amazed, you know, looking at cuz um, the other day I was looking at all the variants of it and it made me realize like how like night like <laughs> the the Gan was. Yeah. And, and I love the Gelgu, so I'm definitely going to be getting the um, both of those. And I would like to get the older suits from the UC oh, side yeah. of things the too. Oh yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's one of yeah. Char's uh, main ones at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I loved it so much. My favorite scene, hands down, would be that moment where Afrin and Shira were battling it out, and oh. Afrin did the little tease of, 
giving like <laughs> like because she was like oh well you're this strong and i i can read your mind and then afrin's like no you don't and he pulls the wild card of showing like a a uh, fan service Kigali and then oh yeah yeah <laughs> That's and and then at the end when Ka oh another thing too I don't forgot we touched on it but it's a part of this like you see that you learn a, kind of another scene moment I like is that you see that Kigali has a remote so yeah. she is able to like not only control the mobile suit that Afrin's piloting but she's able to model monitor in on the events so when she found out what he was Afrin, in, in order like, for the you guy idiot. To... yeah <laughs> i thought that that, 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 killed me. I thought that, was, that was good too that's up there for me <laughs> yeah. i my favorite mobile suit is and i had to look it up it's the f or stts f 400 murasami kai hmm. yes you know because it looks it looks like something out of uc and it has that zeta wave rider form um, yeah it does. I, I, I love that the look of that so i'm gonna have to track one down when the model kit comes out and then as for favorite moment, I think it's the time where, and I want to say it was Mula Flaga in the gold. Uh, oh, the Akatsuki. Akatsuki. Yeah. When he blew up the ring that the thing was going to yeah. like, I love the idea that he appeared right there in the danger zone. Yeah. And then, because to me, that's like a small little tactical moment mm -hmm. in the movie. Cause they could have easily just said, Oh, we shot the gun. So now it can't work, but it's like how he went about it or their plan. Right. And wasn't there a part, that mimics like the originals where they're at the deck three times okay, now, three, three times, times now. Yeah. This is the third time. And I actually kind of was like, Oh my God, well, are they really doing this a third time? <laughs> yeah. like, can this guy just get a break and stop getting shot by these cannons. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was pretty good. So, um, yeah, you know, a lot of good moments. I got to say at the end of the day, again, we saw this in the theater. Actually, you saw it twice, but as much as I love you see the most, this is something where once it's on Crunchyroll or whatever, I would watch it again. Those it's fast paced and mm -hmm. the mobile suit battles look great because they're able because they're using 3D, they're able to really linger long term on like a battle kind of happening. And so you you're like seeing it all. Um and I would even suggest because of how it felt seeing it on the big screen to like watch it at home in front of a TV. You know, we're so used to sometimes doing it on our laptops on our phones. But this is a movie to watch on a TV with a sound system. I wanted to give one last note too. It's good that you say that because I um, I remember reading on the X, the X platform or Twitter platform. Yeah, there was a UC fan, and he, and I forgot which account this was, but they wrote it perfectly. They're like, "Listen, I'm not a C fan in any way. You know, I've always loved the the UC side of things, but watching the film, it was one of the best films ever." And the wow. way he summoned that up, it, it made sense. Because if you think about it, this film, as of now, I believe it engrossed $145 million Yeah, I was reading office. something that was really good for a movie to, which is good news. Yeah. It's good okay. news. So, well, yeah, we're going to we're gonna end it here. But any last words about the movie? Ian, anything? You know, if we get more Gundam movies, like, down the line, because I feel like this is just a good reason to give us more Gundam related like okay. movie content or another series or something like that support the series you know yeah, uh, when it, actually. especially if it comes here to the US like Cuckoo's Dawn's Island didn't get enough justice with that I would have loved to have seen that in my theater over here I'm still yeah. waiting for a home release over here when you know yeah, that's interesting yeah um, and then you know as far as the movie goes great movie I loved it um, I recommend it even if you're not a seed fan just you know, watch it and yeah. uh, hope you it's enjoy fun. it. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks guys for talking about this. I think you guys are the best to talk seed about really. Um, <laughs> and, and that goes for anyone else. Uh, if you want to join our discord, we have a link below so we can continue to talk about the movie in the discord. But uh, until next time, guys, thanks for joining. We'll talk later.